This story happened about two years ago when I was 16, on a family trip to Armenia. We rented a car and spent around two weeks driving across the country. The incident I'm about to describe occurred halfway through our trip and utterly terrified me. One night, we stayed in a really fancy hotel, a special treat from my parents, who usually opted for simpler accommodations. The hotel was grand, boasting an indoor pool and gym, which excited us all. We decided to enjoy a swim in the pool, and it was delightful. We were the only ones there, playing with volleyballs and relishing the luxury. After a while, my family members, one by one, returned to their rooms to shower, leaving just my mother and me in the pool. That's when a creepy incident occurred. A hotel staff member, identifiable by his local appearance, entered the pool area. He walked past us, turning on the pool lights. But what unsettled me was his direct, eerie smile at me. I felt a bit uncomfortable. Considering we looked European with our light hair and skin, which was quite uncommon there. After my mother left, I stayed in the pool a bit longer. But the staff members' continuous stares made me uneasy. Deciding to leave, I grabbed my towel and headed out, only for the man to approach me, complimenting my looks and asking my age, all in broken English. I politely nodded and quickly left, feeling creeped out. I went to the women's bathroom next to the pool to change. Midway through, I realized I hadn't locked the door and quickly did so. Just moments later, I heard the doorknob wiggle. Assuming it was another guest or a cleaning lady, I hurried to finish. Exiting the bathroom, I saw no one except for the creepy guy walking away. At that moment, I realized he was the one who had tried to open the door. He turned, smiled at me, and began walking towards me. Panicked, I rushed back to the pool to grab my forgotten shoes, with him following uncomfortably close. Despite his continued compliments, I managed to escape and reach the exit. My heart raced as I feared he might have locked it. But thankfully, the door opened. As I climbed the stairs to my room, trying to calm down, I heard the elevator doors open. It was him again. He walked towards me, smiling, and pointed to a flight of stairs leading to the rooftop, inviting me to join him to view the city. I declined shakily and ran to my room, locking the door behind me. Throughout our stay, I saw him around the hotel, and he always tried to initiate conversation. I informed my parents about the incident, and they were concerned, especially since he seemed to be an important figure at the hotel, possibly a manager. This harrowing experience took place during the summer of 2010, and looking back, I'm grateful I trusted my instincts in that unsettling situation. I pressed the button to call the elevator, but there was no indication that it was functioning. The atmosphere in the storage room was increasingly unnerving. The muggy, dusty air and the dim light added to the sense of isolation. Despite my initial thought that this was just another route back to the lobby, I began to doubt my decision. Realizing I might be in an unused part of the hotel, I decided it was best to head back the way I came. However, when I turned around to retrace my steps, the sheer size and the dimly lit expanse of the room made it difficult to locate the door I had entered through. The shadows seemed to play tricks on my eyes, and every step felt heavier than the last. After what felt like an eternity, I finally found the door and hurried back up the stairs. My heart was pounding not just from the physical exertion, but also from the eerie experience in that desolate room. As I ascended, 
I promised myself to stick to the main areas of the hotel for the rest of our stay. When I finally reached the lobby, I found my family and friends visibly shaken by the incident with the girl. It turned out she had fainted, possibly due to dehydration or exhaustion, and emergency services were already attending to her. The spilled eggs and milk created a chaotic scene, but thankfully, it seemed like she would be okay. This unsettling start to the day, combined with my strange detour to the basement, left me feeling quite anxious. I spent the rest of the day sticking close to my family and friends, trying to shake off the eerie feeling from the morning's events. The hotel, with its peculiar design and hidden, unused spaces, had lost some of its charm for me. I couldn't wait for our trip to come to an end, so I could leave the unnerving experiences behind, and immediately understood something was wrong. The janitor, a sturdy, middle-aged man with a concerned look, quickly assessed the scene. He noticed the man in the lab coat, and then his gaze turned to me. A terrified kid, just a few feet away from the stairwell door, What's going on here? The janitor demanded, his voice firm and authoritative. I was too out of breath and scared to speak coherently. But the man in the lab coat, now clearly agitated, tried to explain. Nothing, just a misunderstanding. The kid got lost. The janitor didn't seem convinced. He glanced at me then back at the man in the lab coat, his eyes narrowing with suspicion. Kids don't just get lost down here. This area is off limits to guests, he said sternly. Turning to me, the janitor asked, are you okay? Did he hurt you? Shaking my head, I managed to mutter, no, I just got scared. I was locked in and he, he was leading me the wrong way. Understanding the gravity of the situation, the janitor quickly ushered me towards the stairwell door, keeping a watchful eye on the man in the lab coat. Let's get you back to the lobby and find your parents, he said in a comforting tone. As we ascended the stairs, the janitor kept a reassuring hand on my shoulder. My heart was still racing, but the presence of this kind stranger who had come to my rescue, brought a sense of relief. Once we reached the lobby, he asked for my room number and called the front desk to inform them of the situation and to locate my parents. The hotel staff were quick to respond. My parents, who had been frantically searching for me, arrived in a rush of relief and concern. After a brief explanation, and ensuring that I was safe and unharmed, my parents thanked the janitor profusely. The man in the lab coat was nowhere to be seen, and the hotel staff promised to investigate the matter thoroughly. It turned out he was not an employee, and his presence in the restricted area raised several questions. This harrowing experience left an indelible mark on me. I was grateful for the janitor's timely intervention and realized the importance of always staying alert, especially in unfamiliar surroundings. The remainder of our stay at the hotel was uneventful, but I couldn't shake off the eerie feeling that lingered from that bizarre encounter in the hotel's basement. Sat down, trying to shake off the unsettling feeling from the strange phone call. The night was already tense due to the eerie experience at the hotel earlier, and this only added to my anxiety. I tried to focus on the Olympics on TV, but my mind kept replaying the woman's frantic voice and the way she had screamed my name. It was bizarre and unsettling. Just as I was beginning to calm down, my phone buzzed with a notification. Hesitantly, I picked it up, half expecting another odd call but it was a text message. It read, please call back immediately, urgent. 
The number was the same one that had called me earlier. My heart raced with a mix of curiosity and apprehension. Who was this person? And why were they so insistent on contacting me? I debated for a moment, then decided to call back. The phone rang a few times before the same woman answered. This time, her tone was urgent, but more composed. I'm sorry for earlier. I need your help, she said quickly. I could hear a tremble in her voice that suggested fear or distress. Who are you? Why did you scream my name? I asked, my voice firm yet filled with curiosity. She paused for a moment before responding. I work at the hotel where you dropped off your application. I saw something, something I can't explain. Your application was on the desk, and I saw your name. I didn't know who else to call. Her words sent a chill down my spine. The strange hotel, the man behind the desk, and now this mysterious call. It all felt like pieces of a puzzle that I couldn't quite put together. What did you see? I asked. My interest peaked despite my better judgment. I can't explain it over the phone. It's about the hotel. There's something wrong with it. Can we meet in person? I know it sounds crazy, but I think you're the only one who can understand, she pleaded. I hesitated, torn between the desire to uncover the mystery and the instinct to stay away from what seemed like a potentially dangerous situation. After a moment of contemplation, I made my decision. Okay, let's meet. But not at the hotel. Somewhere public. We agreed to meet at a nearby cafe the next morning. I spent a restless night. My mind filled with questions about the hotel. The woman's cryptic message. And what I might uncover. Little did I know. This was just the beginning of a series of events that would plunge me deeper into a mystery that seemed to grow more complex and unsettling with each passing day. The manager's revelation about the former employee's behavior and his recent lurking around the hotel added a sinister layer to the events. It was clear that this wasn't just a case of mistaken identity or a random prank call. The man had a history of disturbing behavior as you and your husband spoke with the manager, the seriousness of the situation became undeniable. The fact that the man had been previously fired for stalking and was still haunting the premises was alarming. The manager's cooperation in contacting the police and filing trespassing charges was a relief, but it didn't entirely ease the fear that had settled in your mind. The realization that this individual had not only accessed your personal information, but also made the effort to physically reach your home was deeply unsettling. The incident with the doggy door was particularly disturbing, indicating a level of boldness and disregard for boundaries that was truly frightening. In the aftermath of these events, it was crucial to take steps to protect yourself and your family. This might include changing your phone number, enhancing home security, and remaining vigilant about your surroundings. It was also important to stay in close contact with the police, providing them with any additional information that might help in their investigation. The experience left a lasting impact serving as a stark reminder of the importance of personal safety and the unpredictable nature of human behavior. It underscored the need to be cautious about sharing personal information, especially in environments that feel off or untrustworthy. As you navigated the aftermath of these harrowing events, the support of your husband and the swift response of the police provided some comfort. However, the encounter at the hotel and the subsequent events at your home had irrevocably changed your perception of safety and trust 
in unfamiliar situations. Now that the police are involved, they are actively looking for him. At this point, I was in tears, realizing the gravity of having given all my personal information to someone who turned out to be unstable and menacing. His harassment and stalking have been relentless. I've been receiving phone calls from unknown numbers throughout the night. Fortunately, he hasn't returned to my house, at least to my knowledge. I felt it was necessary to contact the references I had used on my job application to inform them about the situation. Disturbingly, my old boss received a voicemail around 2 a.m. on Monday, filled with heavy breathing and what seemed like sexual noises and moans. This past week, sleep has eluded me. Anxiety has taken hold, leaving me jittery and on edge. The sound of my phone ringing or my dog barking sends me into a state of panic. While this may not be the scariest of stories, being able to write down and share these experiences is a small relief in itself.